In this video, I'm actually going to be going over an introduction to Game Audio APIs. API is an acronym for Application Programming Interface. Now what that means is it is a program that was programmed to help people who are not programming oriented. In this video, I'm going to be going over the three main APIs that you will come across. There's First, there's Exact, primarily used in XNA. Next, there's FMOD. This is an industry standard that's been around for a while. Next, there's WISE. It's a relatively new API. It has a lot of functionality. And finally, I'm also going to be going over the Unreal Development Kit and how in many ways it actually comes off a lot like those APIs in its own way. So I'm going to jump back over to Exact and we're going to get this project started. The first thing you're going to need to know about audio APIs is the wave bank. The wave bank in all audio APIs is actually where the wave is stored. Whether or not it is actually stored in the project or it is referencing to an external file, the wave bank basically gives a categorized view of all the waves that are currently in the project. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to slide this over here. And you can see here in the exact wave bank you've got a lot of different information. I've loaded in some music, some sound effects, it shows the size, format, quality, and the compression, and quite a few other things that are really useful to know. You can also see all that information down here in a different format, and you can also form a compression preset. Now once you think you actually understand the loading of a wave bank in Exact, it's really quite easy to switch over to one of the other your audio APIs. Now I'm actually going to switch over to FMOD and show you. So here we are in FMOD. The first thing you'll notice about FMOD is it actually runs on a tab-based system instead of a Windows-based system like Exact. And here we are on the WaveBanks tab. Similar to the Exact WaveBanks window, it has a lot of the same information. Down here in the Waveforms box, you can actually see a lot of the same information that you saw in the WaveBanks folder. Up here, you have the ability to actually change names, give it compression formats, or tell it whether to be streaming or not. There's a lot of different options and it's really a good idea to read these descriptions on the right hand side. Next I'm going to be going over to WISE. So here we are in WISE and WISE has a similar tab based system as FMOD except it's sort of different in its own way. Now you won't actually see a wave banks tab. Instead all of the waves are actually organized into the audio folder. When you put them into the audio folder first you have your main hierarchies and then from your hierarchies you go down into subclasses, then you go into subfolders, and then you go into subactions, and then once you get done with the subactions, you can finally import your waves. It's a little bit more complicated than FMOD or Exact to begin with, but once you get used to it, it's really not that bad. But you do have the ability to set the compressions down here if you right click and go to conversion settings. Now in here, you actually see a lot of the information that you saw there, but not all of it. And up here you actually have the ability to change the compression as you would. Finally, I'm going to be going back over to the Unreal Development Kit. So here we are in the Unreal Development Kit content browser, which works very similar to other audio APIs. If you actually go to All Assets, and then you scroll from Favorites to All Types, and then you click on Sound Wave Data, you have the ability to see all these sound waves that have been imported into the project. And as you see, it has a lot of the same information that was previously displayed on the other audio APIs. Also, if you'd like to change the actual compression, you can right click and you can go to properties. And here's the actual compression quality right here. Now I'm going to jump back to Exact and we're going to start discussing sound banks. All right, we're back in Exact again, and I'm going to scroll the wave banks over so you can see the sound banks. Now sound banks in Exact are split into two different sides. You have the sound name, which was loaded from the wave banks, and you can load multiple waves into one sound. And then over here on the right, it actually shows you what is loaded into the sound name. And in these sound names, you actually have a lot of possibilities to change up the sounds. By clicking here on the play wave, if you look over here to the left, you have a lot of different functionality that you have capabilities to access. Things like volume variables, pitch variables, filter variables. The three of those combined can create a lot of different sound. Also inside the sound banks, if you click on the actual sound names, you have the ability to give them categories. 
Like let's say we want to turn the music into the music category. By giving them categories, you have the ability to apply effects to multiple sets of sounds. Now I'm going to switch over to F mod. Here in F mod, you actually have two different tabs that you can use that actually work the same as the sound banks. Except in F mod, they're called sound definitions and the event editor. The sound definitions tab more or less works as the sound name tab in Exact. You can click on each sound definition, and within the sound definition, it has what each sound effect is loaded into that sound definition. Then in the event editor, you can actually go here and you can right click and you can go to sound instance properties to actually see what it's currently working with. And you can also right click and add effect. This gives you various effects that you can use in FMOD to actually change the sound around. Adding them together can actually create a lot of multiple results, just like an exact. Now I'm going to be going over to Wise. Here in WISE, you actually have the capability to load up several sounds into what are called containers. Within those containers, you have the ability to affect the entire container, or you can affect the individual sounds within them. And as you can see, there's a multitude of things that you can actually work with here to create various different effects to suit whatever you need for your sounds. And now I'm going to head back on over to the Unreal Development Kit. The Unreal Development Kit, it's slightly different, but it works basically the same. If you go over here and you click off sound wave data and you click on sound cues, here you have your actual finalized sound cues. Now I'm going to be getting into that next, but in order to actually get into the sound bank portion of it, you can right click here and you can go to edit using sound cue editor. Now we're in the sound cue editor and what this is is a visual scripting cue system that is used in the Unreal Development Kit. As you can see, Right here, you have your entire sound wave that's being played at the end. And over here, you have the initial waves that are actually being loaded into it. Along the path, you are what are called different nodes. And in them, you can change each of them to create what you want for your sound effect in the end. So as you can see, this works in a similar way to the other APIs. Now I'm going to be jumping back to Exact to talk to you about sound cues. So here we are back in Exact. And what I'm going to be talking to you about finally is the cue names. Now these are imported from the sound bank to the cue names and what they actually do is these are cues that are called in code from the programming end to actually call the sounds in game. Each one of these cues is actually included with the stop, play, and pause functionality. Now I'm going to be shifting over to FMOD. Now here in FMOD the cues are actually called events and the events work similarly in FMOD as they did in Exact. You have all of your events triggered here on the left. And then if you look over at WISE, WISE actually has something different than Exact and FMOD. What WISE actually does is you have to actually right click and create events for it. So the events aren't predetermined, you actually have to create them yourself. And then you can actually go over to the event tab and you can view the events you've actually made for each sound. See as play or stop. And there's even some pause and resume. Now going over to Unreal. In Unreal it's quite different from the other APIs and it's really where Unreal sort of has the step above the audio APIs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this. I'm actually going to close out of the content browser as well. So here you see I've actually loaded one of the levels in Unreal Engine up. Now the first thing you might notice is there's actually little speaker icons all over the map. And what these are are actual virtual representations of audio cues. The same as the audio APIs, except you actually get a visual for them in game. That's something you can't really pull off unless you're a programmer with the other APIs. And really when you're working in the Unreal Engine, you really have the capabilities to sort of become your own scripter and add your own cues. So it's kind of like an added bonus if you really get into it. So that about wraps up this video for now. It was really just meant to give you an idea of the differences between the different APIs and also Unreal. I really hope this video sort of demystifies the differences between the APIs so you can sort of unmask any fears you might have had about learning such a strange new system.